What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva, and I'm here to do a review of Season 7, Episode 3, Beginnings and Endings for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. One of my favorite franchises, because really that's the only one I watch. I didn't even catch Miami. I was like, I should start with a new series, but whatever. Anywho, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thumbs it up. Share it. Comment. Let's have a discussion about uh, this episode. Now, with Love & Hip Hop, these scripted reality, improvised, direction-given show let's just say you can learn a lot from reality tv okay and, and and that's the theme of these love and hip-hop uh reviews that i do because at first i wasn't even going to do a review of this particular episode but then i was like there was some interesting learning points here like workplace harassment and how to deal with it uh how to get out of unconscionable contracts that are one-sided when you knew that the other party did not have an understanding and that they were not at your level in some ways unconscionable contracts let's learn about those and also why maybe sometimes it's not always good to get involved with a freshly separated woman i, I don't know and 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 also how we also can find that we may think that our lives were bad but there's always someone else that had it worse than i or you so when we open up mimi whom i commend her for doing this because not a lot of women will go to bat for other women but i'm glad that Mimi was like, you have four, da four daughters, Stevie. You know, this is why I'm talking to you. Because, like, why would you have that girl sign a contract for five years and take 30%? He talking about if she fart, I get 30%. I'm just like, Stevie J, you can't continue to do women the way that you do them and still look like the good guy. Because you're not the good guy. You're Iceberg Slim. You are Ike Turner. You are... That's what you've given us. And then we have a recycled storyline because Jocelyn used to be on the pole. Jocelyn came from nothing. Abuse, neglect, poverty. Estelita, abuse, neglect, uh, poverty. And so you take advantage of these women. Mimi, same thing. Only she got up and got hers. And it's really sad because Mimi's mom abandoned her for Scientology. I was like, any religion that had you abandon your children that are still dependent on you, Something is not right with that. But then again, people drink that Kool-Aid and go right on in there and get hit up, lit up, and everything else. But Stevie needs to be set straight because if this was really real reality, I'm pretty sure by now he would be a hashtag for me too as well. But we'll get more into that. Jessica Dime has come a long way. I really like her look. The dark hair really becomes you. All that pink and, and pastel color is really not necessary. She's in love. She's about to be mar married to this basketball player named Sean, who hasn't played uh, for a little bit, but he's trying to get into a league. Uh, Jessica has not been feeling well. She's been having all signs and symptoms of I may be expecting a child and bringing a life into this world. So take the test. She's pregnant. Jessica also is not talking to her mother. Apparently she has a toxic mother. Um, This happens sometimes. Sometimes you have to just separate yourself from the toxicity. Okay. It happens. So I don't judge her for it because believe me, I understand. But I will say this in this episode, Jessica, you were wrong. You were wrong. You were messy. Mimi is in a new relationship with a new female, I guess. But, you know, she's dating this uh, WNBA chick, uh, Ty. And uh, Mimi, they have an event. I guess Ty had some sort of pop-up shop for something. I really didn't see a lot of people shopping. I didn't know what people were buying, but okay. The new chick, Tokyo Vanity, Carly Red, and um, Jessica Dime Show. Jessica's first to get there. Uh, they start talking. And then Jessica's like, oh, where's Melissa? Now, you know Melissa and Mimi had that falling out at the end of season six. So I don't even know why you brought that up. She's also shooting a video. This video is, is going to be hot or whatever. Actually, the song is pretty hot considering what, what's out there these days. I mean, it sounds the same as every other record. But I mean, you know, it's cool because I understand what she's saying. I can't say the same for some of this other mumbled music out there or the logic of some of the things that they piece together and say this is rap or just hip hop. 
But yeah, so she's shooting this video. She invites all the girls to come. And during this video, she decides to have a sit down kumbaya between Melissa, Ty, and Mimi. And she dismisses herself when stuff gets heated. I think that was wrong. And I think even Carly left. And the next thing you know, aggressive ass Ty is sitting there like a damn pit bull trying to defend her woman. And now we kind of can see that what happened between Mimi and Melissa, the reason why Mimi cut off that friendship is because Ty is a jealous female. It's bad enough being a woman and having to deal with some jealous ass man, but to deal with je females are vicious. I'm sorry. I've seen some stuff and I've heard some stories and I'm just like, Ty might not be what you want. Any woman that th that is that territorial is not secure in who she is and not secure in the woman that she is with. So if I were you, Mimi, I would be looking for a new love, baby. A new love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Ty, like, from what she told me, you really wasn't a friend. And Melissa was like, is that what she told you? Okay, she said, y'all were cool. So cool and friends are two different things in Ty's world. So if you her friend, that was going to be a problem. I'm like, Mimi is going to have other female friends of the uh, LGBT community or is the LGBTQ. But I didn't like that. I, I didn't. I didn't really like the vibe that Ty was giving me. And I was just like, you know, Mimi, you might want to think about doing something else. I'm just, I'm just saying that you might want to think about that. But Jessica was wrong for that because you know how it is. That was just messy. And she did it so sweetly until you would almost miss the shittiness of it. Uh, let me throw Sierra down because so when we left off last week, Sierra found out that Shooter has a whole two-year-old as well as a she's pregnant is two months pregnant with with his his baby shooter you said couldn't get down in the bedroom maybe you just didn't turn him on but apparently a lot of other women did it really it doesn't take a whole lot to shoot um some live rounds so i mean uh you you could get it done in 30 seconds it, it just really don't matter sierra is involved with this music producer bk which to me i mean i'm just saying he's a little suspect i don't know if he's really into you maybe he might be in the shooter but that's just my opinion from but he might really be a decent guy but the the wardrobe is telling me something else her and bk are supposedly in this great relationship you know i'm with the man that won't lie to me i'm like if y'all don't get her some sort of speaking lessons on how to talk or read from a teleprompter i'm just like this this is why it comes off so fake also one of the things i noticed about sierra her face looks bloated like Somebody was speculating as plastic surgery, but I can't help but to wonder if she has like some sort of autoimmune disease or asthma or something that causes her face like she's on prednisone. So I, I don't know what's going on there, but if it's plastic surgery, botched is your next reality show. But either way, there, her, BK is the gentleman that she thinks that she needs right now. He giving foot massage. Let's see, that's how my one of my crazy exes got my ass giving me a good foot massage. That's all it takes sometimes is a good foot massage. That can be one of the greatest seductions. Okay, it's crazy ass. That's why his name was crazy, followed by his first name. You know, say that name. But yeah, you know, she like, oh, I, he, he like, you ain't never had your feet. I ain't never had my feet massaged before. You know, she got that bobblehead thing. Go, oh my God, girl, you ain't never been nothing. And she said her and Shooter came up together. I'm thinking Shooter and Sierra's storyline is similar to Rashida and Kirk's. Because Kurt is way older than Rashida. And it sounds to me like Shooter is too while they were sleeping on a dirt floor. Because in this episode, tragically as it is, Shooter's namesake, his oldest son, was gunned down. And Sierra was sharing that from what they can deduce what happened is that basically there were some words exchanged and somebody he was murdered. Let me tell y'all some young people, old fools, whatever. I don't care how much someone talks a bunch of quote unquote shit to you. Uh, there is no way that it should reach the level of positivity where you need to go and get a firearm or pull out a firearm and gun down somebody. That's senseless. It makes no sense. It's stupid. And then you wonder why 
the narrative in white media a lot of times is, well, they talking about police killed them. What about black on black crime? Okay. Whatever. But either way, Shooter was very upset. He said what I've heard so many parents say they've had to bury their children. Parents are not supposed to bury their children. Children are supposed to bury their parents. Unfortunately, in my lifetime, I've seen it where that narrative does not always ring true. Sometimes the parent buries the child. And it's sad. And um, Shooter seemed really hurt. Jock was hurt. Folk in the church just crying. Um, it, it's very sad. It's very sad to have to bury a child. And it also is an opportunity for Sierra and Shooter maybe to reconcile, which is thus why BK kind of was like, I'm going to hang out in the shadows in the back with my shoe polish beard. I don't know what's going on with that. Quite frankly, my advice to most people, although I do have good friends where it has worked out for them, but if you're not in court trying to figure out how to divvy up assets, if it hasn't gotten to that point, I wouldn't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait till they got some papers and, and, and possibly even give them some time. But then there's some men out there that, you know, just can't be single. It's impossible. Uh, you know, that's why you meet dudes that get a divorce and in the next couple of years they're married again because I just can't be alone because a lot of them don't want to do things like iron their clothes. Tokyo Vanny, real quick, we learned that she's a 23-year-old virgin. Whew, uh, sometimes I wish I had saved myself because some of the people that I have allowed in my energy zone, in my vibration zone, I just really wish I could just... Whew, Shake them off. But um, girl, that's commendable. She's not the only one. The girl that plays on HBO's Issa Rae's Insecure, Molly, who plays the role of being the thought or the whole friend, uh, she's still a virgin too, as far as I know. Last she spoke, she was a virgin. Anyway, her her and some dude named Ty, Tiberius Ty, whatever his name is, they together. He want to hit it first. Don't everybody. You can put it out there. You're going to get a lot of inboxes and weird shit going on there. A lot of people want to defy that big cookie. Oh, Carly Red, when they were at that pop-up shop, I was like, she coming there looking like a fresh out the hen house and couldn't wait to cackle lackle with the other hens and tell Sierra's business. Talking about he done brought lives into the world. Yeah, and then Tokyo decided to tell it too. We'll say Tokyo appears to be a good friend because she did go check on Sierra because Sierra like, I just don't want to be out right now. I just stay in my house. I feel safe in my house. I was like, girl, I know you broke up about the death of your stepson, but at the same time, I'm also kind of like, yeah. You know, you would make a good improv troupe actress. Yeah, kids in the hall type. But I was very disappointed in Carly, but that's just what she does. She's the other bone co bone collector on this, on this particular reality series for Atlanta. I just felt like maybe Sierra wants to share that business later on with everyone else. I don't know. Just me. Let's talk about this music thing. Erica Mina and Spice and Estelita meet together. Estelita breaks down and confesses that she got hold of Stevie J's baby arm slash beefcake. Uh, yes, I have seen it. Uh, I was curious. Uh, I wanted to know. I think I've said this in other videos. There was a, a, a video of Eve and Stevie who were in a relationship at one time. And I was like, girl, your uterus will never recover from that or your lower intestines. Um, but either way, Estelita admits to having set on the beefcake, but she did not sign the contract until afterwards. I'm like, girl, that's the formula. He dicks you down really good and digmatizes you. And so you're willing to sign anything just as long as you can get another hit of that beefcake. But here's the tragedy of it all. When you have been lived in dysfunction for so long, you will continue to make the same mistakes until you start to recognize what that is, that this love that you are seeking is dysfunctional. So Spice and they were talking, because Spice has been in the game for a long time, and I've heard of her. I just don't know any of her music. Spice was like how, you know, basically it was coming down to how hungry are you? How Look how far you've come. Imagine walking to school with no shoes on a dirt road. It's raining and storming and you don't, you just trying to get an education. You just sacrificing and trying to do what you got to do. The leader was like, I'm going to tell you my story. 
<laughs> it is so painful to talk about my childhood. I am the baby of 20 brothers and sisters. My father, my puppy, he raped me. And that's when I almost lost it. I was like, oh, shit. Motherfucker, where is he? And then she said he was dead. And I was like, good. He molested her from five to nine and told her that this would be the only way she would be able to make it in the world is by doing things like this to men. What slime ball fucking father does that? What a low life. And then she said her mother was deceased. She had died of cancer. She was gang raped. I think she said at 14 uh, by five different dudes. She'd been on, she's been stripping since 14. So when Stevie got in her inbox, she thought this is finally my breakthrough when in fact it's just another man manipulating you to get out of you what he can and then throw you away like yesterday's garbage. And that is what we must recognize and realize is that sometimes some of us will rush in as fools rush in. Remember all that glitter ain't gold. But after this boot camp, after seeing that Panamanian pride performance, in the words of Tom and Lee, maybe you would make a good hummer because you can't sing. Estelita, you sweet, probably, and pretty. And Erica Mina is another struggle vocal girl. And Jazzy Faye, I think for his amusement, is, is just trying to help you girls out. I, I don't think he's going to take advantage of you. I'm not sure what you could really do with that big dude. But I find it interesting how the producer wants his artists to be in tip-top shape formation. But he's sitting up there looking like he just won Twinkie away from a, from a diabetic coma. I mean, come on, Jazzy. And he's talented. He has done so many hits. I love Jazzy Faye. But when I look at him, I see what Rick Ross used to be. And now we know Rick Ross got some struggles going on. So Jazzy Faye, take care of your health. While you out there trying to get these girls in boot camp, you need to get in boot camp too. Then on top of that, the vocal coach comes and that's when we knew. I'm like, it's do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. How hard is that? Erica, me, do. Ray, I was like, okay, Scooby, I need for you to back it up. Okay, I need for you to back it up. And then Estelita was really on struggle. I would say Estelita be on struggle with her dance moves. Hell, she was on struggle with her workout. I don't know if y'all caught that, but if you caught Estelita was on struggle. I think part of it is because her body is, is out of equilibrium with them saddle back camel hump she call her but girl you need you and sierra need to make your next reality shop store stop botched okay if that's what y'all been doing y'all need gone down there and tell the producers at that show that you looking to get some help from these botched plastic surgeries that you guys have had it's it's just really tragic it just it just really is tommy asks i love her Y'all know she's my favorite love and hip hop AT alien. But she said, girl, let me tell y'all something. My ass was not ready to sweat today. So I went in the locker room, had me a little cocktail. And now I'm ready to come out here and do the other part. I said, you know what? I can't. I just can't. Tommy was just like, Estelita can't sing. And then Eric commits to my, okay, I've done my, and then she was talking about basically like she had done one day of boot camp and all that. I'm like, no, honey, this is like a six month to a one year process. Okay. You have to be conditioned. It takes a lot to work out. Stevie J lacks professionalism. You don't invite your other two artists or potential to a professional rehearsal set. Like, what was that about? Jess Britt, she's out of Houston, Texas. She signed with Rick Ross's, uh, I guess, Maybach Music Group, MMG, that's what they call it. And she needs management. And, you know, she's cute. You know, the orange hair, I could have done with that. But she was cute. And, um, you know, it seems like she's she has some some stage presence and actual work. You know, she can actually work the stage. But what I will say is that Erica Mina and Estelita coming up in this rehearsal and Stevie J up here trying to call some war as if being part of Danger Zone is the lick. So they get there and, you know, just Brittany didn't say anything to them. You know, he was just... He was trying to use it as a teachable moment to Estelita. 
Uh, Because he said he does see potential in her. I don't, other than potential laying on her back for you. I mean, whatever else she be doing to these women. Either way, it got confrontational because the question was asked, you know, how long have you been doing it? She said seven years. And I did with a lot of hard work and not sleeping with anyone, basically. And that's when Erica Mina and Estelita got offended. Because I don't think that just Brittany was directing that comment specifically at them. She was just saying, basically, you got to watch out for these people and not get taken advantage of by sitting on beefcake. So Erica Mina was like, usually when they say that, that means they really have. I was like, girl, let's not talk about you and rich dollars. Okay. I did like what Erica said at one time, said she don't eat McDonald's, but she going to handle Ronald talking about Stevie J. I told you it's the rise of the Latin mamas or the, or the women against Stevie J this season. Cause he's like, this my bus. Y'all get out. Like, Here he go. But before that, there was some shade thrown at just Brittany about her shoe size. Talking about, uh, can you be clear on your shoe size? Uh, it look, your face look like a yeast infection. You look like shit. I was just like, really, Erica Mina? So you one of them girls, you know. Let me note this. Dark skin versus light skin. Because Erica and Estelita can say all day they Panamanian, they Puerto Rican, or whatever they are, girl, we see y'all, we see black women. So I'm just going to tell you, ain't nothing wrong with having pride for, for your country and where you come from. But <sighs> there's African drum beats in that bloodline. But on a professional level, Stevie J, you knew that wasn't professional. So I don't know why you even did it. Um, also, I appreciate Spice and Mimi most of all in this episode for woman empowerment. Because Mimi's like, you got to start thinking about the fact that you have daughters and you wouldn't want men to do your daughters like that. Then again, maybe Stevie don't care. I mean, there's some fathers out there. I mean, we learned from Estelita's story that look at her daddy. He didn't see her as a daughter or someone he should protect. He saw her as someone that could be used and abused. And Estelita, I think that singing is not for you. I don't think being a performance artist is for you. I think modeling may just be your thing. Swimsuits, calendars, um... Uh, uh, being the face of somebody because you have a pretty face, uh, makeup, uh, you need to start looking at stuff like that. I just don't see the singing for you. I mean, you're going to have to show us something otherwise that you've been playing a game and toying with us all this time because I just don't see it. I did catch a bit of Tiana and Iman. It's cute for what it is, the little family unit. Patonia. So I did like that Junie swim lesson. The family swim lessons were cute. But I, Tiana, I need for you to learn how to swim so I can be encouraged to learn how to swim too. I also watched Leave It to Stevie. There really wasn't a lot there because it didn't keep my attention. But the gist of what I got out of Leave It to Stevie is that him and Jock once again had a challenge about who could answer the most questions at Hollywood Squares, which I can't wait for that to come back because that's hilarious. But they were on there and Stevie feels like he did the worst. Safari was also on this episode. Uh, I said, oh Lord, Stevie and Safari in the same room and some women, everybody uterus and lower intestines going to be fucked up. But let us pray for Safari. Thank God he's still with us because he said somebody robbed him. I have a feeling somebody set you up to take your shit. That's usually how it goes and it usually comes from somebody in your inner circle. So Safari, I'm glad that you're safe. And I hope that all is well. Other than that, that's all I've got for basically VH1 Monday. I mean, if we think about it, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share it with your friends and family. Let them know that a diva is here. I think I'm getting ready to go see this movie, Acrimony. But I need to get a hot dog on the stick first because I really want the hot dog with the cheese. Well, it's not the hot dog, but the cheese bar. Back in the day when I was in high school working in Dallas at Wild Pair Shoe Stores at Red Burton Mall. I don't care what you say, it'll never be Southwest Center Mall to me. But there was this great, they had great cookies and they had the cheese bar. It was, you know, the deep fried cheese on the stick in the batter. It was, oh, God, it was delicious. Anyways, I just, you know, I, I got to get there before I go to the movies to see Acrimon. Got to get that taste before I go. Uh, that's all I've got. Comment down below. Let me know if you thought about this uh, VH1 Monday. Uh, of course, Love and Hip Hop. Remember, you can learn a lot from reality TV. And what we learned today, brothers and sisters, is that professionalism matters, sexual harassment, unconscionable contracts. 30% for a manager is not industry standard. Industry norm at the most is 15 and 10% is starting to become the norm. If you have an agent, at the most, they should be getting 3 to 5%. Be sure to read your stuff. And if you need a consultation, I am not a licensed attorney. But I can at least read over the stuff and let you know, oh, girl, to look out for that shit, okay? Hit me up in my inbox. All right. I've been Miss Sophia the Diva, and you've been all that.